something that may not be completely apparent inside of your motherboard, inside of your system when you take the cover off, are the CPUs. And this is a really good example of that. The CPUs on my computer have fans on top of them. I can't even see them. You try to strain and look around, you can't actually see the CPU chip because there's a fan and there's a heat sink underneath the fan and the heat sink is then attached to the CPU. But underneath those is a CPU, is the central processing unit that handles all of the calculations, the major calculations, and moving information in and out of memory and making sure that your computer works. Inside of that, if we were to take off the fan, we were to take off the heat sink, and you'll see this, in the episode that we do about working with CPUs, that you'll be able to uh, take the CPU out of the system completely and replace it if you had to. And those CPUs almost always are going to have some type of fan or some type of heat sink on top of it, which is just a piece of metal that tends to dissipate the heat as the fan is blowing traffic or blowing, blowing the air through your computer and making sure that it's cooling down. Those CPUs get really hot. They do a lot of calculations. So it's important that we keep them cool all the time. These days, it's very rarely you will ever see a CPU just sitting there with nothing on top of it to cool it because they get so warm. If you're working inside of a system that you've just turned off, don't directly touch that CPU. It probably will be even hot to the touch. It could even burn you shapes and sizes these days, you really have to know exactly the type of CPU in your system to be able to determine what shape it's going to be. There's a lot of pins that are in the back of these CPUs, a lot of different technologies. Many of these CPUs are actually multiple cores of CPUs on a single chip. And as you go through this training course, you'll find that it's very easy once you know what to look for, exactly the type of CPU you have, and where you can find out more about exactly how it's designed. Another main component of the technology that's built on your motherboard is the memory. And these are usually these, these sticks of memory that are plugged into these very narrow channels, these connections that are here. That's where all of the major transactions are going in and out from your CPU and your memory. There's a lot of communication. And you'll notice on the motherboard itself that from a geographical perspective, the memory and the CPU tend to be very close to each other. And that's not by accident. You want to be able to access the memory and get it back to the CPU as quickly as possible. And putting that on the other side of the motherboard, just from a technological perspective, doesn't make sense. So you try to group together the things that are going to need that high-speed communication between each other. So you will find that the CPU and the memory are often right next to each other on the motherboard. Very rare to see those separated out in another place. The memory itself can look many different ways, depending on whether it's a desktop system or a laptop system. They might have some, some metal that's wrapped around it, especially the high-end memory that tends to get hotter. You'll have this metal wrapped around it as a heat sink to dissipate the heat away from those chips so that the air that's blowing through your system can cool it a little bit easier. So even though you can't see all of these individual memory chips attached to it, they're underneath there. If you were to take off this metal case around the memory, you would see exactly the same thing underneath. It's just something you'll happen to find, especially on very, very high-end systems. We've talked about cooling our CPUs and cooling our memory and cooling our system, and this is where you would have the cooling fans in your system. Somewhere on your computer are the fans themselves. Very often, the cooling fans are the loudest thing about your system because it is blowing air right through your computer. It's very often we'll do upgrades to the cooling fans so that it will pull air through the system but make it quieter. Very important if you're doing things like making videos, making podcasts, so that your system is a little bit quieter than it is. We'll talk more about cooling fans in another uh, episode, another component of this video training series. There are usually at least one cooling fan and sometimes even more. My system here is very flat and so there are two cooling fans right here and another cooling fan down at the bottom and notice there are two cooling fans right on top of my CPU. So again, very important that our system maintains a very relatively cool uh, system. We don't want any components overheating because when they start overheating, you're going to find that your system begins having faults. It begins uh, shutting down, and we don't want that to happen. We want our system to run optimally all the time, so it's important that that fan is pulling all of that air through and cooling all of your systems all of the time. Cooling fans also come in different shapes and sizes, depending on the size of your system, how hot the CPU gets, whether it's a laptop or not. Yes, even laptops have fans inside of them to keep things cool. Some of them are designed to cool entire systems. Others are designed to sit right on top of a heat sink 
which sits on top of a CPU so that it cools a directly to cools the chip that is in your computer. There's a very focused cooling system right there. So when you open up your computer, count the number of fans you have, try to figure out what it's trying to cool. Try to figure out how the air blows through your system, which is going to have a dramatic effect on how you maintain your system and keep that airflow moving through so that your system is always going to maintain a very cool, relatively cool uh, state as it's working throughout the entire life cycle of your computer. On legacy systems, you'll probably see floppy drives. You don't see these much on newer systems anymore. It's certainly a technology that's fallen out of favor. Most likely you're using USB keys, you know, memory sticks these days to transfer data. But on older systems, you will certainly see some of these older floppy drives with these big ribbon cables connected to them. And you'll see also the power connections going into the floppy drive itself. And it's very simple to swap those out. If you need to replace the floppy drive or you'd like to add a floppy drive to your system, there's probably a connection on your motherboard that that ribbon cable goes back to that moves all the way over to the floppy drive and a power connection that goes to the floppy drive to power it. Very simple to add one into your system to swap it in and swap it out. If you don't have a floppy drive in your system, especially with laptops and newer computers these days, there are also these USB connected floppy drives that you can plug in so that if you happen to have some floppy disks still sitting around, these three and a half inch plastic floppy disks, you can at least have some way to get the data off of those, get it into your computer, and then maybe store it on an external USB drive, an external USB hard drive, or just in your system itself. The main part of storage in our computer is our hard drive. That's where we really put most of the data that we're going to keep on an ongoing basis. It is the storage technology inside of our system that maintains itself even when we power the system down. Unlike those memory sticks we looked at, the hard drive is always going to keep that data available for us, whether we've got power going to our computer or not. And it's often the largest thing inside of our computer. You can see they take up quite a bit of space inside of the case that you will use. This particular system is a dual bay. It has two hard drives I could put stacked right on top of each other in this individual bay. The drive itself, we'll talk more about this in our storage module, has just a lot of platters inside of it. It has a head that reads that. There's also other types of drives that we still call hard drives, we call solid state drives that we, we might have in our system that don't, don't have any of these moving parts anymore. They're all done with memory. It's the latest technology in storage. And in the storage module that we'll do, we'll go through all of those different types. It's very important that we know what the differences are between those for your CompTIA a certification. It Don't ever take the cover off of your hard drive like this picture shows. Once you take the cover off, it's no good anymore. Any type of dust gets in there and you've completely ruined this drive. It's amazing the very tight tolerances that are inside of it. There's, there's air that is allowed into a drive, but it's filtered through the top of your drive and the side. So you want to make sure that you're never in a situation where you're taking the cover off. This is done really more for illustrative purposes. The system that keeps your system running when you first boot it on, your system has to know where does it go to start up? Where does it go to understand what hardware is connected? Where is the hard drive? I should go to that hard drive and start up my Windows operating system. That is all done in the CMOS. We also call this the BIOS, the Basic Input Operating System. And it's just a small little tiny chip that's on your motherboard. This motherboard happens to be a BIOS chip that you could actually remove. You can take it off of your motherboard and replace it if you had to. Newer systems use a flash type of connection that, that is permanently attached to your computer and you can't replace it that way. You have to take a, a program to program it if you ever want to change it directly into that flash memory that's on your system. So it's uh, sometimes it's very easy to find. Sometimes it has flash written on it. Sometimes it's almost impossible to figure out which one of those mini chips is your BIOS. But I assure you, you do have a chip that is on your motherboard somewhere that uh, contains that BIOS information. So you can look around on yours. Sometimes you have to find the, the number that's on the chip, type it into Google, figure out what type of chip that happens to be. It's almost like a discovery episode. We'll go into and figure out exactly what's here. We'll figure out what the different components are just by Googling them. You'll find a lot of information. For instance, if you look at this motherboard right next to this BIOS chip is a graphics by ATI, a Rage XL graphics chip. So this is the graphics capability that is embedded onto my motherboard. So sometimes just by reading what's on the chip itself, you'll be able to figure out what's on that system.